हेलो फ्रेंड मेरा नाम सत्य कुमार फोटोशॉप एडिटर है आप आप मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करेंगे आपको बहुत सारे फोटोशॉप ट्यूटोरियल मिलेंगे थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज एसूस रेमेरिस एंड यू कैन फाइंड मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम एट जे आर फ्रॉम पी टी सी इन दिस वीडियो आई वन शो यू हर क्रिएट पॉप आउट फोटो इफेक्ट इन फोटोशॉप इफ यू वॉन्ट फॉलो अलॉन्ग यू कैन डाउनलोड द वाटर मार्क from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're going to start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the photoshoptrainingchannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez and you can find me on Instagram at jr from ptc. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D pop-out photo effect in Photoshop. If you want to follow along, you can download the watermark previews or license the full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. Different layers, of course. And what we want to do is we want to isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create a selection around the black of it. Zoom in the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring it back tool which I have selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar and down. Click on the bottom right corner and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again the image at 100% and actually now that I'm looking at it at 100% I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I Position. Then I'm going to press curl, alt, g, command, option, g, command. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool. And I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag. And we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her. that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold Alt, Option, Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. and click on the layer below it so they're both selected and I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Control 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. And I'm going to click and drag on this one here to scale it down by holding Shift, Alt, that Shift option on the Mac. Now at this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around our body. So we can properties panel, you can go into the window. Properties. Click on Mask Edge, and then maybe shift the Edge with a negative value, and see how that's adjusted. So we keep adjusting it, and making sure that that line is gone, but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair. And hopefully, we'll get better selection. Now, it didn't do that good of a job here, so. I'm just going to leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm going to press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. So I'm just going to paint with white in these areas here. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm going to get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground. 
foreground and background color. From the black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just gonna go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. keyboard right click and choose fits so we're gonna use this shovel with the snow so let me just double click on that to open that up and by the way the links to these files are on the description you have to download them from adobe stock they're not free but you can use a watermark preview to practice on so i would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn so the first thing i gotta do is get rid of the shovel i'm gonna click on the lasso tool and i make a selection around the shovel and as you can see it's not very accurate Okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace, or you can go into edit, fill, to bring up the fill menu, under contents, choose content aware, and press OK. And Photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear. I'm going to press Ctrl D, Command D in the Mac to deselect. And this is what we're going to work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm going to go to the channels panel. I'm going to look for the channel that got the most contrast. In this case, the blue channel. I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection of the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. The white is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. See the look right? So we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. Now, what I'm going to do now is click on the brush tool, select black as my foreground color, so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard, and I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And these pixels away, which represent the floor. And once again, I'm going to go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid-tones a little bit. And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm going to press Control, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the Layers panel, on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document. I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon. And notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer. So we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command in the Mac, Transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white and bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard. 
dashboard in black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're gonna do now is work with different elements. So I'm gonna open up the libraries panel and I'm gonna open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy, or you can press control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D in the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm going to paste it here, Control D, Command D in the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen, so the black pixel disappears, and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case, the snow. Then I'm going to press Control D, Command D to transform, Control 0, Command 0, for 